Good morning and welcome to CT Brandon. My name is Pastor Nikki and we are so glad that you can join with us today. We are going to have an awesome Sunday together. And so whether you're joining us for the first time, first time in a while, or we've seen you a couple times now, we would love to say welcome. It's going to be a great service. We are continuing our series in the book of Mark. And so Pastor Michael is going to be speaking an awesome message. So we can't wait for that. But before that, we have an exciting prayer initiative that we are starting up. So check it out right here. During the summer months, schedules shift and the common denominator in that change is that our routines are always altered. But that does not mean that they need to be less effective, especially in our prayer lives. In fact, we can be purposeful with the time that we have sitting in front of us. This summer, I want to give you a challenge that challenges to join myself in adopting your block in prayer. I'm inviting you to pick a specific time each week where you do two things. The first is to simply go for a walk, and the second is to pray. As you either already know or probably just guessed, this is called a prayer walk. It is as simple as it sounds. Go for a walk and pray, not in a weird or dramatic way, but just pray. Thank God for your neighbors and even ask for opportunities to show them love and hope. On the CT Brandon website, there's a new tab that has some information for you, some tips and even prayer ideas if you're not sure what to pray for. There is a place that you can fill out a simple pledge saying that you're praying for your block. Then once we have a whole bunch of information come in, we will make a map and show where everyone is praying throughout the summer. If you're from outside Brandon, join us anyways. We know that many attend physically and even online from tropical destinations like Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Nipawak. We are a church that has a large reach, and we know that as a spiritual community, God is working and doing great things. This summer can have a huge impact. I hope you make plans to adopt your block and pray for the people you say every single week. Repetition is an extensive part of our daily lives. It is even, a, I would say, a crucial part of how God's story of interaction with us is told through Scripture. In my group study on the book of Genesis, we, we looked at the repetitions in the Pentateuch. Now, think about the similarities between the stories of Cain and Abel, and then think about the similarities in the story between those and that of Jacob and Esau. Or even to go a little bit further and consider the people of Israel being led from Egypt in the Exodus, then contrast that with Abraham returning to his homeland. Repetition. The Gospels are no different. Now, each of the four authors has stories about Jesus that they have included, and some of these are repeat stories. Sometimes they even have different details. This is about the the parables that we have even covered. Um, Now, realistically, the messaging in the parables has all been the same. The messaging is all around the kingdom of God and how different it is than the kingdoms of Rome and the kingdoms of Greece. And even consider the historical kingdom of Israel through great kings like David and Solomon. The kingdom of God, as told by Jesus, is different than these kingdoms. There are even places in scripture where we get to see some repeat behaviors. Now, this includes the repetitive behaviors of Jesus himself. Now, that's kind of an important thing to pick up on because he was fully God, yet he was fully man. Now, let's read from Mark chapter 6 together. Mark chapter 6, starting in verse 30. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going 
that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left on a boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them there as they were leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. All they wanted to do was get a rest. Now, we've covered this before. We've talked about this. But this is where it comes into the understanding of the, the, the repetitive behavior of Jesus. Now, behavior repetition is something that is part of our everyday lives. From making coffee in the morning to what you order at McDonald's, we all have these idiosyncrasies, these little habits and a way of doing life tasks that makes us the unique people we are. Now, some of these even bring us comfort and tame the chaos in life around us because it's something that we can control, usually because we know the outcome. Now, here at CT, Tuesdays are a busy day for us. The day starts with a staff meeting followed by a pastor's meeting, followed by follow-up meetings to follow up on the first two meetings. Now, the first meeting is where all of the staff meets together, usually in my office, and we go through last week's highs and lows, and then we discuss what is coming up and how do we support each other and how do we support the church and our community in the best ways possible. These meetings go on and on and on sometimes, but they're, they're amazing and it's useful. Now, I know that with this particular meeting, staff meeting, meeting number one, the following will always happen. One of the team is, I'm not going to say who, but one of the team is going to move a chair to the inferno that is in front of the heater. I have one little heater in my office Summer, winter, and everything in between. This staff member loves to sit in front of the heater. We'll always move a chair to directly in front of the heater at the beginning of the meeting. One of them will also bring a fried egg sandwich every Tuesday morning and eats breakfast while we begin the meeting. Every week. The seating arrangement also never changes. I'm the first one there because it's my office. And then they come in one by one and they always sit in the same seats because we are all creatures of habit and repetition. Now, there are, of course, in life, some unhealthy patterns that we get into. Some consciously fall into bad habits and some unconsciously. Um, we, we date the wrong people or we, we basically make choices that we know are going to be harmful. And people do this over and over and over again. Now, there are also healthy repetitions that we build into our lives. These are things like getting enough sleep, having people around you that build you up, getting exercise, um, even constantly trying to learn something new all the time. Now, the latter group, these are things that we often do to retrain our brains. And it's essential to become a better person. It is very similar to our spiritual lives. In Christianity, we work at things called spiritual disciplines. Now, these are physical and practical things that we practice that have both spiritual and practical impacts on our lives. These can include fasting, they can include prayer, giving, and even slowing down in life. If you're interested in learning more about spiritual disciplines, I always recommend a book called Celebration of Disciplines by Richard Foster. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, Disciplines are a way of building habits. That are, they don't not only take us from being lazy and relying on ourselves, they bring us to a place where we are fully relying on God. 
Two weeks ago, I spoke about the shopping list that Jesus gives us when it comes to evangelism. Now, for those who came to the service at CT, um, it's better known as the suitcase sermon. But in that teaching, I talked about our need to trust God and not ourselves. Because as we do that, the authority is gained through the process and solidified in the progress. But jumping back to Mark, we can see that some of Jesus' behavior is done in repetition. Maybe that gives us a a glimpse into a piece of the character of God that we don't always talk about. We always assume that life is haphazard, but there are repetitions everywhere. Um, Just even think about the simplicity of the change of seasons. This happens over and over again. It is a repetition that is built for us. Now, for Jesus, we saw a need for quiet time. And he said, let's get out on a boat where we can get somewhere and relax, get some food and rest. It sounds like spiritual disciplines to me. There is a tension in life. So we go recharge and rest. We don't try to tackle it on our own. I I love how he brings up the getting alone to rest. The introvert in me responds well to being alone or just around a few people that I trust. It works for me. I get it, Jesus. Now, for the disciples, though, The last time this happened, there was a monstrous storm and the disciples were sure they were going to lose their lives. But there is a tension to this scenario. Um, The book of John, I just hit the mic. The book of John recounts the story of this happening in John 6.15 and points out that the people were actually at the same time chasing Jesus down because they were ready to crown him him king. They were big fans. Now, this would, of course, be the opposite of what the kingdom of God looks like and what Jesus was trying to establish on planet Earth. So take that and add last week's story of John the Baptist being beheaded. So you've got yourself crazy people following Jesus. You've got yourself um, a jealous Herod who beheaded John the Baptist, crazy Jewish leaders in the mix as well. A a good time to get on a boat. Everyone wants something from you. But for us in 2022, we don't always have a tension like that chasing us down. But there are pieces of life that just happen. But all the while, Jesus is saying, guys, just follow me. Now, This is the second time Jesus asked the disciples to get in a boat with him. I wonder, with everything that has happened since last time they boarded the SS Anxiety, if this is more of a test and less of an answer to public transportation lack. Now, last time Jesus fell asleep during the storm and then called them out for having low faith. Now... Did their faith grow since the last boat incident? Like the preachers of old used to say in their tent meetings, faith is a muscle, you gotta work out to get stronger. There's some truth to that. Because there is something about living on planet Earth where we keep ending up in the same lessons until we get it right. I had a student in my office once when I was a youth pastor. She moved to tears as she eventually got to this question. Why does drama keep following me? Well, if you keep finding yourself surrounded in drama and it has to do with you, maybe you're the problem. Maybe there's a lesson you need to learn in here somewhere. Maybe there's something God wants you to learn to get out of these repetitions of unhealthy life. 
The same thing happens in our lives with everyday situations. We, we learn lessons about gossip. Lessons we should have learned as children. But we still talk about the people around us. As someone who is in a semi-public life type of a job, I hear things about myself all the time from other people who don't really know me. But I've heard things from other people who don't really know me. What a crazy world we are choosing for ourselves to live in. Uh, what about our finances? We make bad financial decisions, or we don't work hard, and we always struggle, but then there are the people who um, they make their finances into a, a spiritual discipline. They do the Dave Ramsey stuff, and they, they take control of their lives so that they can take control of their lives so that they can take control of their lives so they can take control of their generosity. It all comes back to our spirituality. Or even lessons about praying for others. One of the most common missed opportunities people mentioned are the ones where they knew someone needed prayer, but they just kept walking. Or the times you know someone needed you to talk to them and encourage them. Just say, I like your shirt, I, nice shoes but you had too much on your mind to stop and change their day. These are all missed opportunities as we've talked about in the past. Now, oftentimes in life, we get through a sense of trial or, or tribulation, these tough seasons, and we assume we passed because we got to the other side. That's good enough, right? Then through circumstances, God says, not so fast. Friends, has God been training you and preparing you for something? We have all of these life challenges around us. And I promise you that he didn't cause it, but he's going to use it. Remember if God says, get back in the boat, know that you've got this. But let's continue back in our story from Mark. Uh, we left off about verse 33, um, verse 34. So Jesus saw a huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, mm, you feed them. With what, they asked. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have, he asked. Go and find out. And then they came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told his disciples to have the people sit down have them sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. And Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up to heaven, and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so that they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. A total of 5,000 men and families were fed with those, with those loaves. Incredible. This is one of those stories where the goodness of God shows up. It shows up in spite of us. It shows up because of a little bit of obedience. Now, let's get back to our teaching for a moment. As we talk about the repetitions in Scripture, does God ever say to you, you're not done yet? 
if he has, it's for a reason. The first time the disciples got in the boat, there was a giant storm. And I'm sure they were looking for Jonah's whale at this point. The second time they got in the boat, it was because of a massive miracle waiting on the other side. And lives were altered. Let's ask a very honest question of ourselves. Do you ever throw in the towel? Maybe you say something like, I just can't do it. This isn't for me anymore. Maybe you made an excuse not to even try to abandon relationships, to abandon community. What about in prayer? Do you make excuses for God? I, I've done this. If my faith isn't where it needs to be, I feel like I need to make sure that I save face instead of praying for something that I don't feel is going to happen. Maybe God doesn't want to be bothered with my situation. Maybe we believe a lie that God doesn't care about what we're going through. I've been there. It sucks. Our job is to be obedient. Our job is not to make something happen on behalf of God. He is God so that we don't have to be. Now, because of the, the ability of the, the disciples to keep going in this story, to get back on that boat, thousands of people were fed both spiritually and physically. They have been in a desolate place, but they learned a really important lesson there. Here's the lesson. Even though you're in a desert, the one who feeds the world is at your table. Don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on your relationships. Don't give up dealing with hard things. Seasons change and seasons pass. We can learn so much in these seasons about relying on God. And he's going to teach us so much about who he created us to be. It is important not to assume that the storm is going to rise up and take out your boat. Instead, realize that this could be one of the greatest miracle seasons of your life. I want to pray for you as we close this message off. And so, Lord God, I thank you for everyone watching this today. I thank you that you are amazing. You are in charge. You are our God. Would you continue to speak to us and be the one we rely on? In Jesus' name, amen. What a great message from Pastor Michael. And it's just so great to have you joining with us today. And we'd love to have you connect with us. So please head to our website, click on I'm new here. We would love to get to know you. And we have so many exciting things happening at the church right now and happening for the summer. You know, a lot of places wind down in the summer and we don't completely wind down. We just kind of change a little bit what we're doing. So please connect with us on Instagram, on Facebook, um, be checking out our web page because we constantly have new things that are happening if you have kids we have some exciting camps that are going to be coming up as well this summer and so we would love to see your kids there also we want to pray for you and our website's a great place that we can as well be praying for you next week is father's day and we believe here that church is something that should be enjoyed and not endured so we like to do some fun things so next week it's called wear a hat so wear your favorite maybe it's a ball cap maybe it's a bucket hat maybe it's a sun hat i don't know what it is wear your hat whether you're in person online it's a great thing that we can do together uh, to just have fun and celebrate and again fathers we have a gift for you to just thank you um, for the impact that you've had on so many people's lives as well uh, we have some other exciting things so on the 26th of june we are having a barbecue and it is going to be so fun it's kind of our year-end barbecue as people head out for summer or 
things just change up a little bit, but we want to have a barbecue with you. So we would love to have you there. There's going to be burgers. There's going to be hot dogs. There's going to be Smokies. And you know, whenever there is food and there are friends, it's a great time. And so we'd love to see you there. And if you came prepared to give today, we are so thankful for that. All that we are able to do is through the community here and through CT as a team. And I am so thankful for the team that we have here that supports one another. So if you came prepared to give, we try and make this as easy as possible on you. We do have pre-authorized payments. So if you're someone that's like, I totally forget to do this. This is something, can I just set this up? We have a way that we can do pre-authorized payments if you contact our office. Also, you can do it through texting the number on the screen. You can do it through e-transfer. You can do it in person if that's how you feel most comfortable. We are so thankful that everything that we are brought in to CT, we can then give out to our community. We want to be a church that is not thought of as only thinking of ourselves, but we wanna be community-based, community-minded, and to be helping to love and support our community. And we are so excited for that. So I hope you have felt encouraged, inspired, and refreshed from this Sunday. And I hope you feel ready to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this next week. See you again next week.